Welcome to Season 2, Episode 20 of Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham, and today I'm just going to noodle on about a, uh, a an online novel that I've been writing since uh, May 13th, 2005. So it's been... <laughs> it's been 15 years, and it uh, isn't going anywhere, and it's evolved and changed, and uh, probably will never result in a publication unless I actually do it. But who knows? Maybe it will be out on its 20th anniversary, or maybe never. But I've gotten more into it, so I'll, again, and I'll uh, tell you more about it after the break. Welcome back to episode 20, season 2, Chris Cast. Hurrah, hurrah, 20 episodes. Hurrah, hurrah, 20 episodes. Um, 15 years ago and a few months. 15 years ago and four months. Uh, I started a an online attempt at creating a, an anonymous, uh, novel. I called it Hill Mole, uh, for the following reasons. I had lived on Capitol Hill since 1997 and in the same apartment since 1998 or 1999. And it was 2005 and I had become a very much ingrained regular on Capitol Hill. And by Capitol Hill, I define Eastern Market all the way to 14th Street. I do not include in my world, I do not include all the way over to, um, you know, all the way up, up to North Capitol uh, and South Capitol. However, there's forays, you know, my Masonic Lodge is on, you know, is on... Um, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, further down towards the second, third, fourth street. And of course, you know, things go into, are not just on seventh street. They're also on eighth street, Southeast. And that entire area is, was my home base. And I spent, uh, a lot of time, uh, living, in what I called the grotto at the time. It was the basement apartment at 14th and A Southeast. There's a, uh, a storefront there that's actually a private residence. I lived in the spacious basement apartment and it included a deck. It included a deck and I spent a lot of my time at the various incarnations of the coffee houses that are now where Peregrine Coffee is uh, right there on 7th Street Southeast. Used to be called, um, I think, Roasters on the Hill. And then it was called um, uh, Murky Coffee. And now it's Peregrine Coffee, I believe. And uh, I loved it. And, of course, Eastern Market is actually a working market. Uh, except when it was burned down and there is on the weekends a, uh, a market proper and there are, uh, f there's a flea market there. There's a new market there. There's an art market there. And this was my world. Uh, it included Lincoln Park, the place of the notorious, um, the notorious sculpture of uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, with the slave or, or uh, releasing the slave from slavery. Uh, it was, it was, it was my, my entire world. And in that world, there was a, um, a painter who painted in watercolors. And there was my dear friend, Sarah, 
and her sister Susie and her parents. And there were uh, my friends, uh, Andrew and David and Min and Amy and all the people that I knew. And um, I used to have these little fantasies, little funny fantasies. I've always been interested in adventure novels like Mac Bolan and I've loved... Uh, James Bond, and, and I just entered this little fantasy uh, because we lived on Capitol Hill, because when you'd be sitting at the coffee shop, uh, I'm not much of a, a stargazer, but there was always some person from Capitol Hill coming by. And when I would be sitting with someone who knew the ugly, ugly, you know what they say, D.C. is Hollywood for ugly people. Uh, the the boring, ugly, bloated faces of of the Hill celebrities such uh, from the Congress and the Senate and the staffers, etc. Even the, um, um, you know, the people behind the people, I would realize that uh, that. D.C. was an active city, you know, an active city like Berlin, Paris, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, uh, and London, if I haven't said London already. So I was like, well, there's got to be spies here. So I will pretend that everybody that I know has a cover story. Oh, this was also a time when I was dating a doctor out of... Uh, out of um, McLean, uh, and she, she was a doctor and her dad supposedly worked at a bureaucracy on the Hill or no, in DC. Um, uh, not Bureau of Statistics, but you know, the, the profession where you spend all your time trying to figure out what someone's lifetime will be. Uh, and, and, but, but, but Wendy and her dad, Ben had both been to Yale. And so this, this would be serious underperformance if they were only a plastic surgeon and, and, a and a DC bureaucrat. So part of this fruited from the fact that I, I've thought to myself, wow, you know, w when I'm sleeping over at Wendy's, she can get a call at any time, day or night, and none of her neighbors would blink an eye. You know, she could be an assassin or or a honey trap, or she could be a, an operator. And those weird hours would completely be understandable. You know, much more understandable than someone who's leaving their uh, leaving their garage at you know three o'clock in the morning. If you don't know that they're a long distance runner or that they have some sort of weird um, workout routine or if they don't have a strange job that, you know, requires them to keep strange hours that are inconsistent over time, who's more like that than a doctor, right? A doctor who um, is on call at the local hospital, a private practice, but, you know, she could... She could easily negotiate cheating on me, I thought. She could easily negotiate um, working for whomever. Th these, these calls could be completely not associated at all with her, with her doctoring life. Um, same thing with Ben. Uh, spent many years over their house over, uh, over uh, holidays. And, you know, all of his friends are spooky. So, obviously... Uh, his job as, uh, hey, Google, what is the job for someone who predicts someone's lifetime or, or life length? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Alexa, what is the job where someone is able to figure out how long someone will live? According to sparkpeople.com, Live goes on. That was stupid. I'm happy to hear how I can improve. You can always say, I have feedback. Yikes. Sorry, I'm having trouble. 
Please try in a little while. <sighs> well, anyway, that didn't work. Um... Well, anyway, back to this. It, it was it was amusing the heck out of me. So I took it further, and I um, uh, there's a, um, a watercolorist on the hill called Tom Bucci, and he um, would always just spend all of his time every afternoon uh, from two or three all the way till closing, sitting in peregrine or murky or roasters and he would be you know noodling on his on his his whatever um his now it's it's an ipad but you know back in the day it was a notebook or it was a sketch pad or whatever but because he is he's an artist he has carte blanche to just sit there and observe what's going on without any accountability. He can even stare off into the, into the, he could just stare at people and look around and his plausible uh, deniability is that he is an artist and he's just uh, someone who looks. Uh, that was something that Mark used to tell me is that I really should have remained a photographer because it gives me, um, it gives me access to looking without, uh, with a camera, I'm a photographer. Without a camera, I'm a creepy guy who stares. Anyway, so this um, this idea coalesced into coming up with uh, an idea. And the idea was sort of like a mixture of notes from the underground and um, that Matt Damon movie where he doesn't know he's a spy, but then he's a spy and... Um, and it was sort of this first person narrative of this dude who knows a lot about what's going on around him, but doesn't know why he does, whether he believes maybe he's crazy, maybe he's not, that he's been, uh, he's been trained, but doesn't remember, but has this, this, um, uh, amazing situational awareness and ability to pick out spies or maybe it's just paranoid delusion. And over to, and it was really kind of, I think I really had a, I was really on a roll because I was making commentary about DC. I was making commentary about the Panopticon. I was exploring my own life and I was sort of remapping Spycraft onto it. And why not? Because I'm in DC. So instead of calling, you know, instead of making a mountain out of a molehill, I called it Hill Mole. Because I lived on the hill, and I and this protagonist, this first person narrator, was a mole on the hill. Um, never really had um, a narrative, a storyline, a denouement, um, um, a plot. I just would write little quippy. Uh, inserts, little quippy segments uh, inspired by Kurt Vonnegut's little one, two paragraph uh, chapters and just had fun with it. And, you know, there's really not that many considering I've been doing it for 15 years. I would say now there are uh, exactly 190 chapters in the, in the, in the book it and it's been and when i installed it back in 2005 may 13th uh i installed it using a uh pearl script based cgi proto blogging tool called TypePad. um and it was you know get to pay for it uh, but you can install it onto um, onto a web server. You can install it into Apache. And if you set up the permissions correctly via, um, via SSH and FTP, you would be able to uh, create a, a dynamic website that actually wasn't dynamic in the way that WordPress 
is a database backed site where the more traffic you get, the more, um, the more weight and, uh, the more, <clears throat> the more services used, uh, the more resources used, um, based on heavy traffic. The beautiful thing about gray matter and early, um, hosting based, uh, um, 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 blogger, blogspot, and, um, and of course this type pad is that every time you hit submit to the blog post, it would, it would run a CGI script, which would take up an enormous amount of resources. But once the site was re, uh, re-rendered, it would go to all flat files. So the only time it was ever at all an application is during uh, the the um, um, the re-rendering during during posts or during changes and any changes to the site. So let's say you ch- need to change the right column, you would change the code and then you would have to render re-render the entire site and then it would go through a process of running through a CGI bin, running through a Perl script, and then spitting out all the hundreds of pages associated with the site. And after that, it would be a flat file. So I have exactly that same type pad uh, install on there. And it is, believe it or not, <laughs> actually, it must be a later one. I must have upgraded uh, into 2006 because it is version 3.33 from six apart. And, um, there you go. It's uh, sorry, movable type publishing platform type pad is the hosted version. So it's literally movable type. And I've been, I've been running it ever since, uh, And lately, I've been using it as a double blind. I mean, nowhere on the site is my name, but I'm pretty. It's pretty much an open secret. But lately, I haven't felt like talking about controversial things on ChrisAbraham.com until I really have my ideas um, solidified and 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 fully realized. And so, I don't know. I uh, I sort of brain dump onto onto uh onto hillmole and do it in a way that's a little bit more uh i don't know uh playful or i try to use i try to come at things from someone who's spookier more operator more spy craft more red in more you know, super high clearance version of myself. So I do a lot of pretending on the site while I'm writing. I guess that's what a writer does, but it's not, it's no longer framed in pushing a storyline forward where this particular person who lives in a basement apartment on the hill has this life where he's surrounded by people who, um, are probably, um, painters, and are probably plastic surgeons and are probably um, uh, Washington bureaucrats. Um, and, and here's the funny story. Like I really created this idea that my friend Sarah and her sister Susie, and they don't look very much like each other. And uh, their dad, uh, who worked at USAID, and the mom, who's this quirky artiste, I came up with this idea that they were, did I even write it? I need to write it if I haven't. I had this idea that actually they weren't a family biologically, but that was their cover story. So all four of them could live together and they had a plausible cover story to, to be living and deeply integrated into the Capitol Hill uh, community, right? Hot blonde daughter, hot brunette daughter, uh, um, Amateur, competitive cyclist dad uh, who worked at USAID, which of course is a, we all know it's a front company um, for hearts and minds abroad 
all that fun stuff and the quirky artist mom for me they were all spies and they were living they were living a uh they were living a a a safe house life and we all believed that they were family but in fact they were just um connected together much like a lot of the families in that tv show the americans which at the time wasn't on tv but definitely has a lot of concepts of families that were put together through intention uh, so as to create a plausible cover story so that they could be embedded in communities in which they lived without being suspicious. So then it went further and further. My best friend Mark uh, is, of course, a um, disappears because he loves traveling and isn't reachable. And where did he go? And all that fun stuff turned him into an assassin and I've just been really enjoying it. Now I've uh, 190 chapters and nobody reads it and I don't know what to do with it next, but I really enjoy it. So um, I'm into it again now. I try to do uh, a couple chapters a week. Um, when I think of it, I've been, you know, busy and I've also been, you know, doing other things, but let me know. Hillmole.com, H-I-L-L-M-O-L-E.com extremely fond of it and i hope you are too anyway i'll be back right after the break Welcome back. My name is Chris Abraham. This is episode 20 of Chris Cast season, season 2. Uh, I'm Chris Abraham, which I might have just said. Um, and uh, thank you for listening. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com. You could read my uh, The Fever Dreams of Madness at hillmole.com. Um, there's a little, little button at the top right that says you can start at the beginning. Um, that goes all the way back to May 13th, 2005, or you can read it backwards. So it's like a blog. There's only one chapter per page. And so you can read it backwards or you can go all the way to the beginning. There's a, a link on the page. I think at top, right, uh, bottom, right. I don't know. Uh, believe it or not, that mole, uh, is in fact a, uh, lives in Maryland. So it's not even, it's, I'm not even stealing a star nosed mole, uh, from some Indonesian place. There's actually star nosed moles in the mid Atlantic, which I think is a beautiful coincidence. Um, oh, I love star nosed moles. And, uh, you can reach me at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Instagram, Facebook.com slash Chris Abraham, YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham. You could explore my, uh, Green Army Men fixation on YouTube right now. Um, I'll go into it more later, I'm sure. And, uh, you can email me at Chris at Abraham.su. You can call me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can schedule an appointment with me to talk at calendly dot com slash chris abraham slash fifteen slash thirty with however long you want to talk. Calendly. Uh, I hope you're smart so you can spell it yourself. And um, you can text me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. That's also my WhatsApp number. Uh, anyway, I am glad you got all the way through to this, and I will talk to you soon. Love you, mahalo, nui loa, and ciao. <laughs>